What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. My name is Splattercat, we are here today with the next episode of Legends of Grimrock. In the previous episode, we had fed items to a giant gaping hole in the ground that it seemed kind of hungry. It was like, feed Miss Splatter! And so I did. I went ahead and I fed it, and then it vomited items all over, so it was less hygienic than I would have hoped, but we got some gear out of it. This says Spectral Relay, and so we're still on the third floor. We are still beating around the bush here, attempting to get off the third floor. So what is... Oh, that's pretty simple. Okay, let's go and I'm going to put the note right there. And I have no clue how to get that door open right there, but seeing as there's a receptacle perfectly poised to catch what's coming out of this thing's mouth, my guess is that maybe we just have to fire something into its mouth, and then it'll be all nice and happy and content. Isn't that how things work in life? You fire things into people's mouths and eventually they just give you what you want. I mean, isn't that what it is? I would assume. And so now we are back here. Yeah, this is kind of the beginning area that we were already in. We flip that and it puts that floor up right there. Okay, it looks like there's a free hat right here. A little Deku hat or something. Okay, well, I'm going to start assembling these items right here. Because very, very shortly... We are going to have a number of rogues that are all going to need lighter gear in order to make themselves more proficient at whatever it is that they do. Mostly they sneak around and they look at my bum bum would be what I think they could. They're always behind me and they're always in the shadows, so I can't imagine they're up to anything good. Let's look at this letter. I found some better armor, so I'll leave my old equipment here. It's too bad that I was a little clumsy with the leather greaves, though. I won't risk it by going after them myself, but maybe someone else will be willing to take the plunge. No idea how to open the door, though. That's because you don't have the golden key that goes to the golden lock, my friend. If indeed you did, your name would be Hedgerow Hank. And so we've got a Knopfer mace. Okay, I don't think that's going to be very useful because nobody in our party uses maces. And we've got some ringy boots. So that's pretty cool. Boots with which you can show your affection for your significant other and tell them you want to be together forever. And since he said there was pants down here, why not? Let's take the plunge. Ow. Hey. Hey. Ain't no sneak attacks around here. You stop that, you fungal bastard. Before I proclaim you not a fun guy. Oh, yeah, there is armor down here. Oh, wow. Okay, so those are actually kind of like bad. I thought, I thought he was talking about it was just another pair of leather pants so that we could furthermore look like a rock star group of adventurers moving through the dungeon, but no, he was talking about actual armored pantaloons, like those things are, those things are pretty bitchin', all things considered. We'll start upgrading everybody's gear, it looks like we have a level up down here on our nameless rogue, and so with her, I would prefer, she's already made it to quick shot, so I'm thinking we should probably make her work towards light armor proficiency, I am thinking that's a good idea, she's not in the front line, so it's not as important as getting truffle tongue over to her armor proficiency however it is still an important thing that we should probably be focusing on i'm going to click on the crystal because it appears as though we're just about done with this floor we'll swap out for an led torch and then down we go okay floor number four i always try and save when i enter a new floor so let's go ahead and there we go we'll save right here and the game doesn't autosave when you go to new floors. That's the thing that you're really going to want to be aware of, is that as you play through, it doesn't, and this looks really sort of like a booby trap. Yeah. Hold on here. Let me see what I can do with this. Really, that didn't... None of those are weighty enough. Well, damn. They've done this to me before, and I know this is going to be some kind of horrible, horrible tarp. Sigh. Okay. That's about what I had figured. And I'm not okay with being trapped in, so I'm going to try and keep my movement somewhat variable. It can be hard to think about that in this game sometimes. Like, it can be really, really difficult to realize that you're not moving around enough. But you really should be. It's an all-around smart idea to just be... Oh, damn it. Okay, so the mage is not looking so great. Okay, so we got one of them. Luckily, there's, there's a res crystal right up above us on the floor before. Right through the door. What's in store? 
treasure galore and all that. Oh, hell. So there goes our friend, the mage, but he was poisoned, so it's not... You guys are fragile. All these guys are super fragile. They gotta get a better chin on them. Glass Joe here. Getting beat down by people that are tiny and ineffectual. Did he drop more? Oh, he dropped a key. Okay, that's fine. He's like a key bearer or something. And I keep trying to tempt fate by ducking in there and attempting to do, well, let me see if maybe we had some throwing knives in here for a second. And maybe we'll just whittle him down. We're just going to kite like the wind. We're going to be the hunter right now. Although, I suppose we're so, we're sort of fulfilling the role of both hunter and hunted at the moment. Because we are both kiting and being chased, so I don't know. I don't know who counts as, like, the victorious kiter here. So we lost a couple people. Luckily, they do seem to level up, even though they're dead. Which is an impressive feat in and of itself. If I died and then I leveled up shortly thereafter, I'd be like, well, what was the point of that? Like, I wouldn't- I always put my keys on the front row guide, in case you were wondering. Over here, we have some level up, so let's take Truffle Tongue, and I was gonna move her up to... We're trying to get her to light armor proficiency, just like we have on our warrior. However, that's gonna be nice, because her evasion is up to 37, which is fairly incredible. The other thing we have to think about is perhaps the possibility that... Oh, okay, so here it is. I was gonna say, I didn't see what the solution was just yet. Let's go back up the stairs. I'm gonna use the previous level. Hopefully that res crystal is nice and recharged for us. It is? Oh, it's not. Okay. I don't know how long it takes the res crystal to feel better, but let's go ahead and... Oh, she's hungry. Hold on. Let's solve that. There we go. And so hopefully we don't get attacked by... Ah, uh, you too? Really? Okay. Everybody's hungry right now. Everybody has the nom noms going on. It's okay. I have like a hairline switch on when I'm hungry to when I'm not. And if I'm exerting myself in any way after I hit that point, I'm just like, wow, I feel really frail right now. Bam, there it is. I think it recharges like maybe once a day or something. Or the game keeps some sort of track of an internal timer or something like that. I'm not really sure how it works. Let's level him up. We've been working on his spellcraft quite a bit to get him to level 10 so that he could cast spells faster. And I do think that going for improved combat caster is a pretty good call. However, let's push for... Let's get whatever the new ice spell is, just in case we come across that. Actually, I think I'm going to push... Since willpower is his main stat, I think I'm going to push ice up to 10 so that he can get the willpower a little bit sooner. And it looks like we're going to get Frostbolt eventually because it says your Frostbolt spells get better. So I would assume that Frostbolt is somewhere on the list of upgrades that we're going to have sooner rather than later. Let me get her re-equipped properly. Is that just a short bow or is that a long bow? I bet it's a sh it looks sort of shortish. Yeah, like, don't call me short. I'm very insecure about it. My stature has always been a point that is tender in my life. Please stop. I do not enjoy your ridicule. I am a bow just like any other bow, be it that I am more concealable, and perhaps lighter, and a little bit smaller for frailer hands. Oh, and you know something bad's about to happen in here. I'll take the free flask. As opposed to the flask in bondage. The flask in bondage is just kind of a downer to be around. I mean, we know that it happens, but, you know, sometimes you just don't want to be reminded that some flasks are in bondage right now. A blood drop blossom will give you an energy restoration potion. Okay, I'm going to throw that over there onto my mage. And you'll forgive me for a moment. I'm having a kitty invasion. Both cats are deciding simultaneously that they want all the attention in the universe and that I am not allowed to continue recording until they receive it. So I've got a bunch of food in here. And from what I understand, I think Truffle Tongue was looking like she was a little bit low. We'll get him to eat because he's going to be up on it anyways pretty soon. So we might as well get some people maxed out. I don't think there's too much reason to carry around a lot of these lower level weapons anymore, so I'll probably start using those to trigger traps and stuff like that. Two teleporters, each with... Oh, we've got skeletal archers in here. <laughs> you thought that was going to work. Heh <laughs> Go ahead, and I'm going to put the shurikens in right now. While we wait for these two guys to come around the corner, we're going to get ready with a blast.
I don't actually think they're... Oh, hell. I don't think they're actually going to step in here. Woohoo. This guy can't decide where he wants to go. If I could actually aim my spells properly, this would also be easier. There we go. And it's not going to pick up the arrows automatically because I unequipped the bow. That's the one thing you want to remember is that the auto pickup ammo only works if you're still bearing the same item that fired the ammo in question. So watch out for that. Don't leave your ammo behind. That's a bad, bad thing. The Beast Gardens and Menagerie. That sounds absolutely awful. Time and Tide. Oh, hell. And arrows in my ass. Oh, Jesus, there's more of them? Okay, so we've got even more of them over here. Let me move around some of these alchemical agents. Get a healing potion out real fast. Ooh, okay, almost got me. I think they're trying to be cutesy right now. Their continued attempts at flanking me. Are they coming from the right or from... I think they consistently try to flank you. Or maybe they just walk around randomly. Who even knows? There we go, got one of them. And that one shouldn't be too far behind because he took a considerable amount of damage. Oh, they dropped a frost arrow. That's pretty cool. I don't know if you can pick up frost arrows again, though. That's one of those little things that I wasn't so sure if these are reusable. Let's try one right now. Or do they just become normal arrows? Oh, you actually do get them back. Okay. So that's actually a really, really interesting turn of events. I wasn't expecting that to work in the manner that it does. Let's check this little central area for anything that might be useful, including but not limited to cracks in the walls, small things that might open large areas that we get treasure from, and so forth and so on. Although I am thinking that it's time for a little nappy poo. So let's take a nap. Hopefully we don't get jumped by anything while we sleep. That's always a pleasurable experience. I should have picked my location more tactically where I'm sleeping. Usually you don't get attacked unless there was already enemies in the vicinity anyways. And so seeing as we're sort of in an area... Well, let's figure it out. Let's have a look down here. I want to make sure that I know where all my ends are at for right now. And also so that we know where the key slots are. We'll say green... The Herter key? No, the green key. I gotta put everything in the right spot. There we go. And so we've marked that spot right now. We need a green key for that. I'm gonna be careful about clicking. Oh, it's for, okay, so that's for the iron door, even though it looks a bit more like, I guess it sort of looks ironic, but I don't know. It looks more coppery to me, except for the wear and tear around the edges wouldn't make sense on copper, but I think it's because they put like a little bit of verdigris on it, whereas rust will turn things red, you don't typically see a whole lot of green oxidation on iron. I mean, sort of, I guess, but that's typically more often associated with copper. Let's see here. Can I reach that through the door? No. Oh, that's actually the exit, so I'm guessing maybe we have to clear out and hit a switch. What does this say? Crimes forgotten. Caverns still echoing. Trails of thought. The catacomb. Just headbutt a wall for a while. I can't take it anymore! This dungeon is breaking my mind! I guess we'll start with the one that sounds the worst, the bestiary. So let's start there. And does this just take me back from whence I came? Okay. Good. Well, as long as I have an exit strategy, I don't feel too terrible. We've got another one of those spitty things with the receptacle. 
and it looks like we've got a couple spearmen in there that we're gonna have to be aware of oh we've got another level up over here too which is good because we wanted to put him into heavy armor and so after heavy armor what I'm thinking I'm gonna do now shield expert is good and since he's the front line it's not a bad idea however we may want to go let's make the push with armor first I guess now that I'm thinking about it I'll probably go for shield expert first then we'll bring swords on up to thrust or maybe Flurry of Slashes seems kind of nice, too. I don't know. It's a tough call. Both appear to be equally interesting. We'll go for armor for right now. We'll go for armor first. Since he's our frontline tank guy, I want to make sure that he has everything taken care of. So we'll take a little bit of extra protection. We'll put on the Phalanx Helmet. Good, good, good. He's looking a little bit more robust. His protection is up to 25 which should be nice. I'm assuming that it's a percentile at this point. At least I'm hoping it's a percentile because a 25% damage reduction is cool unless we have the option to have more than that, in which case it's not cool and I hate it. Hey, it worked. I love it when a plan comes together properly. Grab our arrows back. I don't think there's anything new about the shields that they're carrying around. Everything sort of looks the same. Although I have noticed the insignia on their shield is the exact same as the insignia from the big kind of treasure doors. So things to be aware of. There's obviously a secret switch right there. Whoever installed that did not do their job properly. That is probably the most ostentatious switch ever. And you'd be like, but I love it this way. I love showing off my nature and wealth. Okay, so it looks like my torch is going out as well, so that's another problem. I don't suppose that there's a torch in here anywhere. Sort of worried about what's going to happen when I step on that switch. Yeah, bad things. That's what's going to happen when I just step on that switch. Horrible, horrible things are going to happen. And so I think it's probably in my better interest... To eliminate all the enemies in this open air. Oh good, we got more blood drop blossoms so we can make some energy potions if we need them. I don't think that we will, but might be useful. Okay, so let's get rid of all these legionaries first. Because my guess is that they're just going to be ads and make everything worse on us. There we are, get our arrows back. Ah. Try to avoid taking any stabs to the back row if we can help it because the people in our back row are really, really fragile. I don't know if you've been watching their health bars along the way, but when they get hit, we feel it. It's like the earth shakes and I'm just like, oh my god, my rogue is so heavily damaged. Oh. Interestingly enough, that was sort of weird. Odd. You forgive me as I fall quiet for a moment. I'm just sort of thinking about the implications of what... I don't know if he accidentally got trapped in there or if he meant to do that. I'm not going to sit by and ask him because he's not much of a conversationalist anyways. But... I am a little bit intrigued by what we just discovered. So presumably... I don't know if all the switches are supposed to be undepressed, so if we want them to all have like their Zoloft going on or whatever. Or... If they're all supposed to be depressed, in which case the life of a switch does not seem so happy to me. I think Zoloft is for anxiety. Never mind. I think I went to the wrong pharmaceutical, but that's okay. I'm not a pharmaceutical person anyways. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm going to need a new torch, so we'll put that one back right there. Yeah, you can't actually push this... So 
so maybe the goal is to trap them like so. See if we can get this one's attention. Obviously we don't want to fire any of our ammo or anything at him because if we do that... Okay, so I bet the I bet the switches are supposed to be depressed. We've got to make them all super super unhappy. So we'll tell them stories about you know fallen puppies and childhoods ruined and all that sort of thing. Unfortunately, it appears as though we need one more participant in our little experiment, and I may have killed off one too many. Okay, so the door does most assuredly open. Oh, there's a bat now, but the bat I don't think is going to depress this. I mean, we can try. Hey, you, you big purple bastard, come here. Yeah, I was gonna say, flying animals don't tend to solve that equation very well. Yes, yes, your genitalia are fantastic. I'm pleased to look at them for you. Thank you. Well, our best hope now... Can we reset the puzzle, maybe? Let's re try and reset the puzzle here. Nope, didn't reset the puzzle. Well, damn. We might have a rather serious issue to think about. I may have killed one too many enemies in order to make this work. It won't allow us to push that down. I wonder if those just spawn randomly. I'm not really sure how this is supposed to... Alright, whatever. I'm not going to complain about a good thing. Works for me, works for you, works for us. Let's get the hell on out. This door is now opened, although I'm not really super stoked about the possibility of fighting with my back to it, but I'm going to do it anyways because the universe doesn't own me. I like to live on the edge rather than living on point like everyone else keeps telling me to be. I am never on point. I am always on edge. All right, so there was nothing in that room that looked particularly treasurely. I am sort of hoping that during the duration of this adventure we don't come across any problems where we start getting hit in the back by anything. Because if it is periodically spawning those skeletons, it is there is a distinct likelihood that we may end up in that particular situation. A scroll. We'll read that in just a second. It's more than likely an alchemical recipe. Let's go ahead and get started on this guy. Ah, he stepped into the position faster than I could get my arrows. I was hoping to step over him and take the position that he now occupies. But nope, his bum bum has taken control of it entirely. We will... Oh, there's a bunch of them too. Okay. So who knows what happens when we step on that. Really, anything and everything. We should probably read that scroll. But still dreaming is all that it says. In the interest of getting mana back before we go any further, I'm going to go ahead and have them rest, even though... Oh. I watched this dungeon being built. But they took it away from my people, and they twisted it. Filled it with traps and riddles. That is not how this place was meant to be. What was it? Because I'm going to be really honest, the decor is sort of horrifying. So, regardless of what your ultimate goal was, or irregardless if I really want to irritate the grammar people, <laughs> maybe they're the ones that were stepping into here, and that teleports you back to the beginning, maybe? Oh, no, it doesn't look like they're going to be able to do that. He's doing like a little skelly dance right now. That's the best that he could do. He, has, he can't move his upper body. He is incapable of doing it, but he's got the legs working for him, all right. I think instead what I'm going to do is break off the episode right here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me at the Nerdcastle for another episode of Legend of Grimrock. I look forward to seeing you all in the upcoming episodes. Take care out there, everybody, and as always, hi-do.